I'd now like to welcome on stage Congressman Tim Wahlberg and Congresswoman Lisa Blunt Rochester. Congressman Wahlberg, a, a, Wahlberg a, rep, a Republican from Michigan, currently serves as the ranking member of the Subcommittee on Health, Education, Labor, and Pensions. Congresswoman Blunt Rochester is the co-chair of the Congressional Future of Work Task Force. She also holds the post of Assistant Whip for the Democratic House Leadership and sits on the Energy and Commerce Committee. We are pleased to be joined by the representatives and look forward to hearing more about their work across the aisle on these important issues. Joining the representatives on stage is Bob Cusack, The Hill's Editor-in-Chief. Bob, take it away. Thanks, Brittany. Um, the Congresswoman has a hard out. She's going to leave us a little early for a big meeting on Capitol Hill. So I want to start with you. What, what are your constituents saying when you look at the big landscape of the future of work? What are the biggest challenges? Well, first of all, good morning, everybody. <laughs> good morning. Um, you know, it's funny because I think even this concept of future of work, it's not one of those kind of sexy things. Like, people aren't really talking about it. It's happening to them. It's not, um, automation is changing things as we speak. And so uh, the jobs are changing, how they do things. And I think people's concerns are more around the things connected to work. For example, my pension. Will I have a pension? It used to be back in the day, you went to work, you had a pension, you had health benefits. And so people are concerned, will my benefits still be there for me? And will I really have a, have a future? Um, part of the reason why I'm engaged in the future of work and why I love it is because I want to have people not have fear about it, but to recognize that it is happening, that we can lean into it, and that we just need to be prepared for it, which is why working in a bipartisan way is so important to me because that's the only way we're gonna be able to, to deal with it. It's about our competitiveness as a nation, but it's also about how people live, work, and play. So when I hear people talk, they don't really talk about the future of work, they talk about health care. Mm -hmm. that, that's what they wanna know, so. Now, you're a, Demo you're a Democrat from Delaware. Uh, Congressman, you're a Republican from Michigan. Uh, Congresswoman, can you say how this relationship started and how you worked on not only a uh, retirement bill, but uh, other legislation as well? Well, I think it uh, started from the fact, and good morning as well, uh, the fact that uh, Lisa Blunt Rochester was perceived and now has been proved to be one that wants to accomplish something in a bipartisan fashion if that's necessary. And I, I feel the same way. I, I always felt that the most important thing is that we move forward. Not 100% necessarily, 60% will do. <laughs> and so let's move that direction. And both of us sitting on education workforce when we first met and uh, serving on the Health, Employment, Labor, and Pensions Subcommittee. I chaired that. She was a new member on the committee. And uh, yet she came with experience, having been the insurance commissioner for the state of Delaware. Oh, no, I wasn't uh, that. I, I was many jobs, but I wasn't insurance commissioner. I was secretary of labor. Secretary of labor. And, that works as well. And person, <laughs> head of personnel. I just, I just knew that she probably understood the issue of retirement ish, uh, benefits more than I did. So it was kind of a survive by having someone who knows what to do. And so we jumped on the issue of uh, annuity safe harbor. Yeah. To give opportunity for businesses to uh, have plans in place that they could feel were secure and give another option for employer uh, or employees to have for their, their retirement package. And uh, so that's how we came together. We worked well. We actually got the bill moving and out. Uh, it wasn't our fault it didn't get passed. Uh, it was something with another committee's jurisdiction that thought for some reason they wanted to control it. Though right now, it looks like I just got notified that next week our bill in the Package Secure Act will be on the floor for a vote. And it looks as if it'll go over and uh, we could have lobbied Senator Portman. <laughs> but I think it's in a, a situation right now that it'll pass. But that was kind of a thing. A person that was uh, willing to work, capable of working, had the background. Um, and I even gave her more credit for more background. So. I, I, that's right. Just, are, are, are you both optimistic that, I mean, that's big news. It's going to be getting a House floor vote, that, that there will be action in the Senate? I'm optimistic about it. I mean, the, this, it became a package on both sides the last time, and our bill was tucked up under the package, the RESA. RESA, yeah. And so, you know, we're hearing good things on, on both sides. Um, and it'll be bipartisan as it yeah. comes out, and I think it's going to come out, to, uh, from my lips to God's ears, come out <laughs> strong, come out strong. Uh, as far as the future of work, where does automation and technology, and both short-term and long-term, uh, where are we looking? We're looking at a labor shortage, certainly, because we have an aging population, and that 
brings into retirement, brings in a lot of issues. But, but what is what can Congress do other than your legislation um, and the administration do in the next five to ten years? Either do one. You want of to you. take that or? Well, this is how we work together. <laughs> yeah. See? You defer to one another. It's very have? nice. Um, it, 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 the, the, the sky's the limit. I think we need to, uh, it, to a great extent, get out of the way, have a light touch approach, uh, put some parameters in place and let it go. It's amazing, uh, I'm sure, in, in Delaware as in Michigan, that when you get out amongst those who are doing the uh, education of our future and now talking to people, young people especially, about the sweet spot that they can find themselves in, um, Yes, there, there are going to be uh, significant technology increases. There's going to be more robotics. There's going to be more computer involved. But we still have the basic jobs that are, are necessary as well, with 7 million jobs going wanting right now for someone to, to fill that spot, 60,000 truck driving jobs. We don't get the goods that we produce in those amazing high-tech areas or in my auto plants. Uh, we don't get them to market without truck drivers. I spoke to a group last night uh, that are tower erectors with all of the technology communications, uh, with the spectrum issues that we're dealing with. Uh, we need people who can climb those thousand foot towers and, and do what's necessary to keep it, keep it moving. So uh, yes, a lot of high tech stuff, but then a lot of basic what makes America great approaches. And now it's just getting our young people to understand that life is there in front of them. Retirement is an option, but work is a wonderful thing. And when you find your sweet spot, you can expand your life. Yeah, I, w I would just add a little bit more to, to what has already been said. You know, you talked about the demographics of an aging population, but one of the things I just uh, read this week was the fact that our birth rate in this country is also at a, at a, at a low. True. That's true. And so, again, that's less people to do the work. And then we already have this, you know, 7 million jobs that need to be filled. And I think where government can play a role is that part of our job is to help people to be able to create jobs, right? So there are things that we can do. We've already, together as Democrats and Republicans, um, reauthorized the, the Perkins, the Career and Technical Education Act. And I think creating ways to be flexible in how training and education is provided is something that we can do as, as government. Um, I think we can create an environment where employers are not so hamstrung by the expense of providing benefits to people. So even the concept of portable benefits, um, I, I just introduced a bill with um, Scott Peters and Lucy McBath, and it, on the Senate side, it's Coons and Klobuchar, but it's really to have us have a conversation about portable retirement benefits so that employers could put in, just like you, you do for other things, you could put in um, like $1,000 a year, 50 cents a, 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 an hour. Or, um, and, and this benefit could travel with people if they change jobs, if you're working in the gig economy. I think there are things that we, from a government level, can do to prepare the workforce, to make it easier for employers to employ people. And, and you know, again, Part of my concern is that we're not, as a country, visionary about this and, and doing it in a planned, strategic way. Um, we, we have bus drivers, truck drivers. If we have autonomous vehicles, what happens to the people who didn't get a college degree but actually get a good salary from those jobs? So even as a member of the Congressional Black Caucus, my focus has been on the future of work, because I don't want to see anybody left behind. Retail jobs, those are mostly women. You, you think about the different populations that are up impacted by automation, and it can be a win for us, or we could leave people behind, and that's, that's not the goal. So mm -hmm. I get excited about it. I want people to see it as cool and sexy, and you know, because everybody's talking about it, but we're not talking about it together, which is why we created a caucus, and it's a bipartisan caucus. We just got approval, so we'd love it if you would join my bipartisan caucus on the future of work, because <laughs> I want us to come together as a country. We well, got to do it together. Be, being a senior, <laughs> I want the future of work to continue, so I'd be delighted <laughs> to be on that. <laughs> um, uh, just a couple more questions. Congressman, um, I talked to a lot of members, and, and even though it is an important big story, members say that when they go home, no one's talking. Constituents, by and large, are not talking about the Mueller report. They're not talking about Russia. 
What are you hearing from employers, the biggest challenge facing employers in your district? Employees, number one. People. Can't find people to fill the jobs. And now, that, has that shifted dramatically over, as the unemployment has, rate has gone down? Uh, it, it, it's, been, it's been the same for, for quite some time. Hmm. Certainly with the unemployment rate being low and lower, uh, that, that adds to the problem. But it's a concern that there are jobs, good jobs available, and the employers are expanding their benefits packages and all the rest to get people. Um, you know, in Michigan, we just, uh, just passed the recreational marijuana uh, law. Um, the employers are, are wringing their hands with now not only the concern about finding people for the job, but good people who are on the job who may have an interesting weekend and come back, and now that forklift operator is no longer going to be there. So again, they're talking about how do we find people to fill these positions? And I think that's where the immigration issue comes up as well. How do we do it and do it in the right way so that we can uh, encourage people to work, but when the job uh, performer isn't there, then find someone who can fill that spot. I know you have to go. I'm gonna let you go. Please thank the Congresswoman no, for joining us. No, I have to say one thing yes. before I go. Okay. Uh, you know, because I really think when you brought up the, the issue of immigration, when we talk about healthcare, when we talk about all of these issues, it's ironic we're in the museum. And I think in order for us, I heard someone say, in order for us to collaborate and to really problem solve and compromise, we need a basic foundation that we can agree on the facts. If we don't agree on the facts, it is really hard to, yes. to, to work together. And that's one of the reasons why working with, you know, with my colleague, Mr. Wahlberg, has been good is because we can agree on what's happening with our retirement system and what the needs are. And I think to the extent that um, we continue to uphold great institutions, um, that's important, that's important. And, and to the extent that we as neighbors and friends and colleagues try to hear each other's perspectives, that's important. Just seek to understand and, and don't give up. Don't give up, stay excited, stay engaged. The fact that you're here today, that's exciting. And the fact that um, I just wanted to be here with my partner as a living witness that um, together uh, we can create a great future for our country, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, thank you. My buddy. So, <laughs> thanks, gotta leave. Yes. That was your Oprah moment. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you, thank you. Well, we'll, we'll stay for one more. Um, I'll see you in markup. <laughs> <laughs> um, last question, and it goes to, to the Congresswoman's point, is bipartisanship. Uh, how can there... Define that. Well, well, what you're doing. I mean, it's, it's rare. You know, we were talking backstage about Laws used to be made on a bipartisan basis, sweeping laws, like the Balanced Budget Act 1997, and now you're seeing laws made, whether it's Obamacare or the tax law, along partisan lines. Um, you know, you've been in Congress, you've been around. Is it relationships? Is it trying to get stuff done? Because most members are actually problem solvers, and they're, they get very frustrated with gridlock. Well, I think I'm glad you point that out, Bob. Most members are problem solvers. If you, if you wandered the halls, and talked with individuals like Lisa and myself, um, we want to get it done. We're, we're as frustrated as, as we can possibly be with the two sides, the two ends of our particular um, partisan groups uh, that, that make it difficult for the larger center section, uh, either Republican or Democrat, to get things accomplished. So it's an effort. Um, I think it'll come back. Um, uh, we've gone through tougher things in this, this great country, and mm -hmm. we survived. Um, I mean, look at Michigan and Ohio get together most cases except one weekend a year. <laughs> uh, we can get it done. But no, I, I, I think things like um, the SECURE Act that we're working on now, and looks like we're going to get it out with uh, Lisa and my bill that's been in there and wending its way through shows it can, can get done. But you have to have that common sense, I think, at least common sense approach, that we're here for a purpose to represent our districts, but we're here to get things done, or work together to hold things back uh, from uh, from uh, being achieved in the wrong sense. So, um, I'm, I'm enough of an optimist to think that if we keep pushing forward, ultimately the American people will decide. They made a statement this last um, presidential election. They made a statement again 
uh, this last election mm -hmm. uh, that put me in the minority. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, I have to continue saying even in that that the voter is generally always right. Mm -hmm. On that note, uh, please thank Congressman Wahlberg for joining us. And I hand it back to Brittany.